So I'd like to call this meeting of the Bur of the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee to order. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is John Bautier. Uh Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandra Fritz. Present. Aaron Boucher. Present. Keith Baldinger. Present. Robert Cox. Present. Patrick Collins. Present. And Mr. LeBeau, your video is a little uh, uh, rough from my uh, view here. I'm wondering if it might be better if the video were off and just audio. It's kind of going in and out. I'm not sure if others are experiencing the same thing or it's just me. Okay, well, camera's off. Uh, thank you, thank you, Patrick. That's um, better. But you actually now uh, <laughs> you've <laughs> you've thoroughly uh, put me off my list here. Is it Christopher Gerard? <laughs> Present. <laughs> uh, Kevin Mizigar. Present. Joseph Sawyer. Present. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Valerie Clemmy. Present. Uh, Okay, good evening. Uh, this open meeting of the Beal Building Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. This order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public ac access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Board of Selectmen is convening, uh, excuse me, the Beale Building Committee is convening by Google Meet as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Um, and I remind all, uh, to, you can press uh, star six if you're dialing in. Uh, this meeting will not feature public comment. And finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So we can move into uh, to the agenda now. Um, item two is uh, to review and approve the minutes from February 23rd, 2021. Is there any discussion, edits, comments, corrections, or would someone care to make a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, uh, by roll call, uh, John, uh, I will abstain since I wasn't uh, actually a member at the last meeting. Uh, Sandra Fritz. Aye. Aaron Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Robert Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizigar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Uh, minutes are approved. Uh, that takes us to item three on the agenda. On the agenda, uh, project financial documentation review. Uh, there are representatives from uh, PMA, Deb or Walter, to take us through the review, please. Yes, not a problem. Uh, first item, uh, and Kevin, please feel free to cut me off. Uh, if you'd like, um, is the change order in the amount of $147,880 for the expanded Lake Street paving. Uh, currently, this is not part of a change order. This is a uh, pending change order or a, a proposal for a change order um, and is being considered at this time for coordination purposes uh, for the town of Shrewsbury um, to be absorbed by the school project. Um, it's basically extending the amount of paving. So currently owned in the drawings, we own from the entryway of the north entrance to the south entrance uh, for asphalt paving. Uh, this, this proposal is kind of twofold uh, for the town of Shrewsbury. Uh, we are gonna eliminate any type of seams that would be existing um, as we'd be paving and it'd be tough to coordinate with another uh, asphalt layer at that point in time. Uh, so it'll eliminate any seaming issues along that road, which will allow uh, pay, uh, snow plows to go through uh, and have no issues. So less damage over time. Um, and it'll also up, uh, free up any 
the, the monies that would have been spent uh, town budget wise uh, and, and allow the town to uh, potentially utilize those on other roads in the town of Shrewsbury. So Kevin, please feel free to add anything you'd like. Uh, thank you, Walter. Yeah, I, I did just want to add uh, briefly if I could. So, um, you know, this just makes a lot of practical sense. It is very unique for this project as we don't have any you know, additions to the original scope. Uh, with the one exception of uh, the sidewalk on Lake Street. And this is very complementary to that as it would, you know, uh, repave Lake Street down to Hialeah and it would just be a nice complete project. So um, we're in a part of the, the project where obviously MSBA would not participate in, in this type of scope of work. And that would have been true from the beginning or whether we had it in now. Um, <clears throat> since it is unique and uh, to this the approach we've taken for this project it is a you know just a, a complete um, change of scope or addition to the scope we wanted to make sure that the building committee was fully informed and had full opportunity to uh, opine and vote uh, prior to uh, doing any of the work okay any questions from members of the committee okay seeing none um, and and uh, excuse me, uh, committee members, um, since I'm, uh, I'm new to the uh, meeting and uh, how to run the uh, meeting, um, please feel free to speak up as necessary. You can use the raised hand uh, uh, tool, but don't be afraid just to interrupt me if I'm going off course. Um, so hearing no um, questions relative to um, item 3A1, um, if we're comfortable, someone kindly make a motion to approve uh, the change order in the amount of 147880 for expanded Lake Street paving. So moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Seeing no, um, no one indicating they have any further discussion, I'll call the vote. John LeBeau, aye. Sandra Fritz. Aye. Aaron Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Robert Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Tipper Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizdekar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Patrick, did I skip you? No, you did not. You got me, Mr. LeBeau. All right. I got I to gotta work on my scorecard here better. Okay. <laughs> next next item I'm free is to review and act on uh, several change orders from, uh, well, two change orders, uh, 007 and 007A um, from a uh, Fontaine Brothers. Um, we have some discussion and explanation of what these change orders are for, please. Absolutely. Uh, change order 7A, again, or I'm sorry, change order 7, sticking with how we have, have utilized these, are the uh, change order or PCOs that would affect the GMP. Uh, this uh, change order, change order 7, affects the GMP by $18,073. Uh, three PCOs included within this. Uh, the first is for uh, ceramic tile uh, in uh, three areas within the school, uh, two not shown and three adjusted. Um, so it's scope that wasn't purchased originally, um, but uh, necessary to complete the, the design intent as well as um, you know stop students from being able to damage any drywall. Having tile on there is extremely helpful, especially the young students. Uh, next item is for the power at the monitor, uh, power to the monitor at the lobby. Uh, this will allow the artwork that is going up on the panels to become interactive for the students and allow um, the the entire school to interact with that art um, and as long and as well as anyone else coming into the school, um, finding words, finding different shapes, finding different objects, finding different people um, within that artwork and and giving history on that uh, the artwork as well. 
the third one is for an additional washing machine or a washing machine in the uh, custodial janitorial area in the mechanical room. Uh, there was no washing machine called out there. Um, I believe it was originally anticipated that the uh, custodial could possibly use the one in the cafeteria, but upon further review, it doesn't seem like that would be a desirable or even a feasible item to take the stuff up from the mechanical room to the kitchen. Um, as well as mixing um, the clothes that or anything that's being washed in the kitchen as opposed to being washed down in the mechanical room would just come with a handful of uh, issues. So uh, this change is for the plumbing, electrical, drywall, painting, and the machine itself. Uh, that is change order 7 and 7A, which is a no cost, no additional change to the GMP. It's expenditures of monies accounted for within the GMP. Um, uh, something that we originally priced was changing uh, concrete base at the pavers from asphalt, um, just a, a much more durable scope. Uh, this was done during the uh, design phase um, and early construction packages. Um, we had money in there for it. Uh, gym revisions and gym equipment, um, just some stuff that wasn't originally purchased that needed to be purchased, some items that, uh, some striping that didn't need to occur, um, kind of a little bit of horse trading within that, but it was all part of the gym equipment buyout, uh, straightening that out. Uh, third one is the relocation of the glass shoe at the curtain wall mullion at the lower entry. Um, this was a kind of a, a drawdown on an allowance that we had for 90% uh, to 100% CDs. If you remember, we uh, coordinated the steel early um, and uh, and whenever you do early packages, you do anticipate for some um, scope that doesn't get cleaned up between the two uh, bid packages. So this is a drawdown on that allowance to make sure that the steel hits at the curtain wall and not doesn't dive straight into the glass, um, which would be visible from both inside and out. Uh, fourth item on change order 7A is a credit from masonry moving into CM contingency. Uh, this is a replenishment uh, from the mason uh for some scope uh not completed scope that wasn't required to be completed along with um a warranty uh that's going into cm contingency um and really just gives the town a little bit of assurance on that cm contingency uh and then a drawdown on premium time for flooring efforts to expedite the plumbing trade um a typical drawdown on cm contingency here um which is again within the gmp uh, to accelerate some of the efforts of some of the other trades um, uh, by allowing it, having one trade work on a, on a Saturday and, and really be able to get into an area where they need um, full access. So that, that is the fifth item on change order 7A and uh, those are change order 7 and 7A. Thank you, Walter. Any questions from the committee? Okay, seeing none. Just one, Mr. Lebeau. Kevin, can you call Patrick? Yeah, Patrick? Yes, I just had one question on the uh, maintenance terrier uh, washer. Is is that also include a dryer, or are we no, a key, uh, dryer? Is that not needed? No, key, key, it, was, uh, it was really for uh, what I made to be aware of. It was really for cleaning of, of kind of like the dirty rags and that type of stuff. Um, but we, we did double check with Ms., uh, Keith Baldinger and he did not uh, see a need for a dryer at that uh, location. Okay, thank you. Yep. There is a dryer in the kitchen. Dr. I, I Dr. Do. Sawyer? Dr. Sawyer, did you have something? No, I'm all set. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kevin, can you please remind me, can we take these for voting purposes, these change orders, do we need to do them as two separate votes or may we do them as one vote? A, a single vote is fine. Okay. Uh, seeing no uh, further discussion, uh, could we have a motion to approve change order 007 dated March 16th in the amount of $18,073? Increase to the BP of drawdown and owner's contingency, and also on change order 007A dated March 16th, a zero dollar increase to the GMP, uh, drawing down on existing GMP allowances, holds, and or construction manager contingency. So moved. Second. We have a motion. 
motion with second. Seeing no further discussion, I'll ask for a roll call vote. John LeBeau, aye. Sandra Fritz. Aye. Aaron Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Bob Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizikar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda, item 3C, is to review and act on some uh, Lamoro Pagano con contract amendments, amendments 008 and 009. Um, is someone from LPA uh, here to talk us through these, please? Good evening, uh, Mr. LeBeau, welcome to the committee. Uh, I wasn't on last month to, to welcome you on, but welcome. Um, <clears throat> the amendment you have, <clears throat> excuse me, before you um, were services that we were asked to provide to the town for receiving of FF and E items over the summer. Um, we're happy to finally formalize these um, with everyone. These were services that were not bought out previously under the contract. Uh, and are being procured under um, Mindy Sonner from Blue Line Design, who actually put together the actual procurement uh, package for this project. So you really couldn't ask for somebody better to oversee the actual receiving of this. She's very cognizant of the issues you see uh, with projects of the size, the types of furniture that we're getting delivered, and really knows what to look for as they're coming in. Uh, as you can see, she has a sub, sub consultant that's also working for her that will help <clears throat> move and assemble the furniture throughout the building. Um, and that really kind of sums up what the uh, amendment is all about. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The only other thing I can uh, report on at this time is we're expecting furniture to start being delivered in the beginning of June, and we expect to be wrapped up by the end of the month. Very good. Any questions from members of the committee? Okay, hearing none, um, again, may we have a motion uh, to approve um, LPAA contract amendments number 008 uh, from March 15th in the amount of $17,295 and amendment uh, 009 in the amount of $37,050. So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Um, we'll do a, uh, uh, seeing no further discussion, um, we'll do a roll call. Uh, please unmute yourselves. Uh, John LeBeau, aye. Uh, Sandra Fritz. Aye. Aaron Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Robert Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizigar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Motion passes uh, unanimously. Uh, that takes us to item 3D, um, to review and act on uh, bill schedules and warrants. We have um, four, uh, uh, four, four bill schedules in front of us uh, for Fontaine Brothers in the amount of $1,976,476. LPAA in the amount of $69,545. PMA can consultants in the amount of $57,222.43 and App Geo in the amount of $7,157.50. Um, again, not knowing uh, how this has gone on in the past, do, do we need to um, speak in any, any detail um, about these four matters? And if so, <laughs> who would be doing those? Uh, Mr. Chairman, these are... Uh four uh, routine uh, warrants that the committee is accustomed to. The app geo is related to the redistricting and uh, work as such um, that Mr. Collins is overseeing. And then the other three are directly related to um, the expenses uh, for the project on site from uh, the, the construction and design team. Very good. So routinely, uh, this would come up on the agenda and it would simply, unless there was something unusual, we'd go right to a motion and a vote. 
That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, so with that, um, is there a motion to approve the four bill schedules and warrants that uh, we've mentioned? So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Seeing no further discussion, I'll call the roll. Please unmute yourselves. John LeBeau, aye. Sandra Fritz. Aye. Erin Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Robert Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizigar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Motion passes uh, unanimously. Uh, that brings us uh, to item four, um, to hear reports and review and act. And first we'll hear from uh, owner's project manager, PMA. Is that you again, Walter? That will be Deb. Oh, okay, thank you. Hi folks, I think you guys can hear me now because I got my speaker fixed. Yay. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, I hope that everyone got the budget summary that Val sent to everybody on Monday. Uh, I've incorporated the, uh, the amendment eight and nine that were just approved in this meeting to LPA's contract. So their total contract value is 7364976 PMA's contract value remains as it has for several, for a long time at 2875085 That budget summary now includes all um, Fontaine change orders through seven. So their total contract value, including pre-construction, GMP, and all change orders to date is $72,776,273. The budget also reflects ff &E purchase orders that PMA is aware of to date, 906280 We have IT purchase orders through last Friday the 19th for 347216 Total value of ff &E and IT POs to date equals 1,253,496. So, um, so all POs and all contracts through, um, through today and POs, et cetera, totals 84,269,830. We have invoices and costs billed to the project through February of 60,124,809 which gives us a balance to finish of 31,000, 350, but that is based on the overall total project budget in the PFA bid amendment of 92,002,159. We are under running that value right now. We're not at the, at the end yet, but we are under, under running that total value. So as we're talking, we are approximately 73 to 80% done with construction. And overall contract, we are 71 to 75% done with the overall project. Encumbered to date, inclusive of all those IT and ff &E POs the, and the new costs that we just approved right now, we're at 85,395,128. That gives us 6,607 remaining of the budget. To date, we have submitted to the MSBA for reimbursement 58 million. 17,386. To date, the district has received back 21,514,754 in reimbursements. We have a pending reimbursement number 29, which was just submitted on March 19th. And taking an estimate of what that reimbursement will be, identifying some of the categories that I that the MSBA is identifying as ineligible. We're anticipating approximately a reimbursement on that pro pay 29, $893,608. And that sums up the budget summary that I hope everyone had an opportunity to, to see. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Deb. Uh, and yes, uh, Val did provide us with the documents and uh, any questions uh, from members of the committee? All right, seeing none, um, we'll move on from uh, the report from uh, Lamoureux Pagano. Would that be you, Sean? Good evening, yes. Please proceed. Um, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, as Deb mentioned uh, in the last rec, uh, Fontaine is building about 73%, uh, which is exciting. Fantastic. We're all that close to the finish line. The the only disappointing part about it right now is all the vertical finishes are done, and they're working on the horizontal ones, and they cover them up as soon as they're done. So I don't have any pretty pitches for you this, this month to really see because they cover it up before even I get to see it half of the time. Um, but with that being said, I do welcome anyone who would like to go on a tour please reach out. Happy to have you out on site. Um, we're actually planning to do a tour with my office through um, the school also. That's how exciting what a time it is right now. So really just please don't hesitate to reach out. A lot of the site features are going in now, fine gradings occurring. Um, as you know, the school has a very strong community garden program. The planters are currently being set for that program. And it, it's just really starting to be an exciting time. Um, I think we, hopefully, I, I hadn't checked with Keith. I'll put him a little bit on the spot. But next month, we can have a flyover. And you'll really start to see some trees in place, you know, sod potentially laid. And, and it's just going to be a really exciting time. So uh, if anyone has any questions, that's all I have to report tonight. Any, any questions from members of the committee? I'm not seeing any. Um, Thank you, Sean, and I will take you up on your offer. I very much would like a tour, um, and I'm sure we can work that out. So thank you very much. Very good. Uh, we'll move on to item 4C, which is the report from the construction manager. Um, I, I'm calling on Fontaine Brothers, I believe. Correct. Hi, my name is Frank Pear, Mr. Wall. Thank you, and uh, welcome aboard. Um, what I'd like to do is just maybe just hit some of the uh, finer points of where we're at on some of the items here. On the inside, the building is really into three, has broken down into three sections, A, B, and C. B and C are both academic wings and those are well on their way. Uh, we're into the final finishes, uh, ceramic tile, VCT, all of those items are going down. Um, and then we are working our way through the academic wing, which is the, I'm sorry, through the administrative wing, the, the A wing, and that has the gym, the gym floor is going down. That'll be complete this week. Um, next week we have gym equipment coming in, uh, final finishes, millwork, uh, food service equipment is going in in a, a cafeteria. Uh, the mechanical, temporary mechanical systems are all leaving the building this week. We're firing up units starting next week. So your mechanical systems will be going off from uh, the temporary to the permanent. And then on the outside, uh, as Sean said, you'll see there's the trees have started to roll in. They're starting with the irrigation, the underground irrigation system. Uh, the plazas are being poured uh, for the pavers, guardrails going in, uh, sidewalks, and we are full steam ahead, pushing for May 28th. So things are going the way that we anticipate. Everybody is working harmoniously to get to the end zone, and we can see it in sight. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Questions for Frank. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, we have a great project team here and, uh, you know, Frank's pushing his crew really hard. Um, pretty sure he hasn't slept since sometime in 2019. Um, and uh, I was almost disappointed, but he did mention May 28th in uh, his, his report today. And so um, unofficially, with absolutely no authority whatsoever, we changed substantial completion date to uh, so Frank can sleep day uh, and then we'll give him a couple of days and then he can get right on the police station and um, we'll keep him awake for another year or so. But um, thanks to all your group, Frank, and uh, all you do for us. No, that, I, no, I, it's me. I, I want to thank you. That made my day. It's been, it's been a tough year with COVID for all of us um, to add some levity to a stressful Situation a stressful day is just what the doctor ordered. So thank you very much. Okay, so you have a good sleep in that day, and then go back to work. <laughs> um, is the, I'm, I'm, I think 
you had concluded, um, Frank, but I just want to be sure if you or anyone else from Fontaine had anything else to add. No, I, I believe we're good. No, this yeah, is no, David <clears throat> Fontaine. Yes. Oh. yes. Oh, no, I just wanted to, to echo Keith's comments and thank him for the the levity. But, you know, our, our team that, that Frank is leading has certainly been working hard to get this one over the finish line and, um, you know, appreciate the partnership from the town and LPA and PMA as well. It's been a great project. Well, thank, thank you. And thank you for your remarks. And thank you for all the great work. We're very excited about this project. Um, that brings us uh, committee members to item five, I believe, to set the date for the next meeting. I'd like to propose we meet Tuesday, April 27th uh, at 6 p.m. Um, in this format. Uh, so please mark that up on your calendars. Um, does anyone have... Uh, be sure. is, is there anything that I may have omitted or anything anyone uh, needs to say before we move to adjourn? Okay, seeing... I apologize for this uh, technical issue. This is the device I've been using for over a year now for every single meeting I've attended. It's never let me down before, but I'll move on to that. Um, <laughs> I have to admit, I want to thank uh, Town Clerk Sharon Thomas because 5:20 this afternoon, I suddenly realized I had yet to be sworn into this body, and uh, in true Shrewsbury fashion, she handled the matter immediately. And uh, I am totally leaving uh, the review committee with you. Um, I also want to thank Kevin uh, for uh, briefing me up the process and. Uh, also, uh, former Chairman Kane, who I expect I, to get copious notes from him uh, at the conclusion of this meeting, and we'll, <laughs> we'll uh, handle them as uh, in the appropriate fashion. We'll just leave it at that. So, uh, with, with that, uh, uh, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn if there's no other business to come before the committee. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Roll call vote. John LeBeau, aye. Sandra Fritz. Aye. Erin Boucher. Aye. Keith Baldinger. Aye. Robert Cox. Aye. Patrick Collins. Aye. Christopher Girardi. Aye. Kevin Mizikar. Aye. Joseph Sawyer. Aye. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you for your kind attention, and we'll see you in April, if not before. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. evening.